When you have a look at this function that's being differentiated, okay, remember that d on dx out the front, it means, hey, what's about to come next? I'd like you to differentiate this guy, okay? What does this look like when you see this function here, right? Well, this is something multiplied by something else, right? So I can use the product rule on this. So let's have a go. I'm going to, and I encourage you to actually do this, like get another color out and then designate one of these to be u and the other one to be v. When it's a product, it doesn't really matter which one's which because you could just switch them around and it would still be the same thing. Uh, but we'll see, this is a bit different with the question rule. So here's the product rule. I've got my u and I've got my v. Now let's see if I can use the product rule which is just, and if you want to write this for your first line, just to help you remember, v u dash plus u v dash. Okay, here we go. That's the rule. That's the rule, yeah. So I can, um, I can quote that, I can use it, and I, it's sort of like using Pythagoras' theorem. It's like, oh, this is the rule which will always work with these guys. Same deal here. Now that I've got my u and my v designated there, I know my product rule is going to use those in this way, v u dash plus u v dash. Let's begin from the top. So what's v in this case? 1 minus x to the power of 6. There it is, done. I don't have to do anything, yet, just write it down. Okay. The next thing along in the product rule is u dash. Let's have a look. u dash over here. Yeah, here's u. So u dash will be 5x to the 4. Good. So there's the first half. Now let's do the second half. What's u by itself? Great. Doesn't need any change. x to the 5. And then the last piece, v dash. Let's have a look carefully. Yeah, very good. You got that minus sign, right? So, minus 6, x to the 5. Fantastic. So, there we go. I've done all the differentiation now, and all that remains is just to tidy this up algebraically. Let's do it. Uh, let's see here. So, one lot of that. I'll just write that down as 5x to the 4. Now, look at your index laws here. I'm going to have minus 5 what? X, 10. X to the power of 10, very good. So you've got six of them here, four of them there, X to the power of 10. And then lastly, what happens to my plus there? It becomes, a becomes a minus. Why? Why? Because you're you doing it by it. Yep, that guy there, right? So minus. And uh, how, many, how many times am I going to get here? Six. Six what? The minus uh, 10. Yeah, again, 10. Now that's interesting because that means I can collect like terms. This 5x to the 4, just going to hang out the front. Negative 11x Happy times. That's so cool. Okay. Now, by the way, and I, I'm, I'm pointing, I use this example deliberately. When you have a look at this solution, it should make you a little bit suspicious because if you come back to this guy, we can write it in a different way to avoid using the product rule. Have a think. What could we have done before we started differentiating? What could we have done on the first line before we turned to calculus? Just have a look at this guy. We can, yeah. So what have we done here? All we've done here is just expanded. Right? Like there's nothing stopping you from working with this guy before you even begin doing any rules and differentiation. And in fact, hopefully that confirms to you, oh yeah, 5x to the 4. That's not a coincidence. 11x to the 10. That's also not a coincidence. Here's where it comes from. Okay? Yes, it is. Now, this is really important, right? Often we will show you a technique with something where you didn't need to use a complicated technique so that you can confirm for yourself, oh, whichever way I go, I get the same answer. Later on, like with things like this, there's not a simple way to do it. You've really got to go for the most complicated way, which is what we're about to do right now. Let's have a look. Is this a, yeah, thank you. Is this a product? Yeah. Is it a product? Yeah, no, it's a quotient. It's a, it's a quotient. You could write it as a product if you want, but it's already in a nice form for a quotient. So I'm going to call this u. This is really important, by the way. The top guy is u. The bottom guy is v. Unlike in the product rule, where u and v didn't matter, u and v, they do matter here, don't you? You're going to do different things to these, right? So you've got to be very, very careful with it. All right, now that I know what's what, I'm going to write down the quotient rule right here so that I've got less in my brain and I can just go through it one step at a time. V u dash, what's on the top here? Minus u v dash all over v squared. V squared, okay. 
All right, and just like before, I'm now gonna go step by step, just gonna take this uh, one little bit at a time. You know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. What's V in this case? X squared plus one. Yep, perfect. X squared plus one. There you go. What's U dash? Negative two. Here's U. Negative two. So U dash will be negative two. And by the way, hopefully you're noticing my copious use of brackets, right? Um, I don't have to put brackets. I could have just said times negative two, but there is so many ways that this can go wrong. I'm going to keep those brackets there as much as I can because it just makes it clearer for me to deal with, okay? There's V, there's U dash. What's the next thing I write? Negative. Minus? Very good, yep. It's a, it's a minor thing. Negative is an adjective. It describes something like negative two, whereas minus is a verb. It's like two things are operating together, but we get what you meant. Uh, what's U? Uh, five minus two. It's just, it's just the top doesn't need to be changed. 5 minus 2x, and then lastly, v dash. 2x. 2x, isn't it? Very good. 2x down the bottom. Okay, so there's the numerator. But we're not quite done. All divided by. Divided by what? x to the power of 4 plus x. Here's v. Here's v. And I'm just going to square this whole thing. Okay, so it's v squared. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, I know that's going to be x to the 4 plus 2x, blah, 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 blah. But for reasons that will become a little bit clearer later on, there's no actual reason, there's very little advantage to expanding this guy down the bottom. In fact, um, well we, we're actually, at this point, having just written v squared, I don't need to use chain rule, product rule, quotient rule anymore. The differentiation is finished. It's done. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to leave that where it is. Uh, but the numerator is still a sort of garbled mess. And I know there's going to be some collective like terms that I can do. So I'm going to just pause for a minute and let you guys expand this on your own. Simplify those terms together. I'll give you a bit of a head start, and then we'll see what you get. So how do you practice. It's just practice. You mean this one here? You mean like when I'm choosing which one's which? Yes. Um, and the reason why you can know that is come back to how we proved it. I set u to be the top, I set v to be the bottom. If I interchange them, um, this would not be the v down the bottom, would it? It'd be u squared, not v squared. But because of how we set it up, this is how it works.